Oh man, here we go, man. We got Omi and the Hellcat in the building. My guy. You know, I texted you this the other day, man, and I and I really meant it. I said, uh, you really motivate me. And uh it kind of fucked me up when you stopped YouTubing, man. Cause like just to think, you know, a lot of people they force the the YouTubing on you with buying shit, but your daily life and the things that you do with real estate and building warehouses and Entrepreneur, real entrepreneurship, man, is what I miss, man. And you don't do it no more. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm being honest. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of leverage my money, right? I'm like, real estate right now, You, the, the most that I can get out of real estate is 12, 12 to 18 to 20%. And I'm like, I want something that I can put $100 in and try to get $300 back. And the only thing right now is it's is basically closed. Mm. So especially now, since the recession's so messed up that I'm just trying to get my money up in other ways so that when everything crashes and burns, I'm right back at it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to change my, I want to go back to the grind. So right now I want to, I want to get rid of my house. I want to go live in a condo. Like, I, I, I want to go back to being hungry. I'm too comfortable. I wake up. I don't do shit. Like, it's. So my life ain't where, where I wanted to be at for YouTube, you know, like, cause I, I mean, don't get it wrong. I, we're making a lot of money, but it isn't the, the lifestyle that I, that I was living, like going out to the club. Now it's all right, let's save this for that. It's not nothing super interesting. Like I'm coming out with a reality show called Reloaded Reality, but that's like all my employees in, in one, under one warehouse. So that's you get right. a mixture of different shit. You get to go home with somebody and get to meet characters, but it, it but once Every, I'm in the clear of everything and, and I'm back into like real estate and I'm back into my clubs, then I'll, then I'll showcase that. But right now, everything is, 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 is super repetitive. It's super boring. You don't feel like we're already in a recession? Oh, man. We, we definitely are. But it, it, it depends, you know. It, 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 this is what happens when half of the people don't want to go back to work. Everybody's like, I, ain't, I don't want to go back to work. It, it's bad. It's bad. It's a bad time. When, when do you feel like the crash is coming? Mid mid twenty twenty three, right before the elections of twenty twenty four, it's gonna happen. Hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred percent. Like you know, by luxury watches in in November, luxury watches took a dive. Everything took a dive. Watches right now, you can get them cheap. So you wait till January right now this year. You start picking up Rolexes. You pick up pick, pick them up a little cheaper. And then by 2023, the crash, 24, rebuild. So you're really waiting until 2024 to really go crazy. Because everything's going to be cheap. Bro, this is all going to be a... Like, people want to go out right now and show out, show off. Go ahead, bro. You're going to be wishing you had these years back. Man. Speaking of that, my next question. Uh, you got a lot of jewelry around your neck right now. Uh, which piece is like the, 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 you know, that piece? For me right now... Like, like emotionally, it's probably this fast lanes. Cause like, you know, like, like, um, you're one of the only people that ever known that, you know, we were like working with, like with Tori. Yeah. To, we're going to get this. to that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get yeah, to that. So like right now I look at this piece right now, bro. And I get kind of like emotional. So right now, like it's the fast lanes piece. Like, you know, it, it got, it got some emotion behind it. How much is all that together? <sighs> Including the watches. The this is about, this is over a kilo. This is about 850 grams. The piece is another 500 grams. So right now I probably got around like 400. Okay. 400,000. All that 400,000? Yeah, about, about a little over four. See, rappers would have got exaggerating though. Niggas be like, oh, this is a million dollars. <laughs> That's what I was about oh, to say. get the hell that cap ass shit out of here. Is jewelry is jewelry a waste of money? A hundred percent. I'm I'm about to become a jeweler, and that's another thing that I'm about to become. So right now, like I use I just use jewelry more for marketing because you could write it off also because it it, it does serve a purpose for marketing. But if I'm just gonna get a, grab a, a, a chain, like and, and to invest, you get an 18 karat gold, all gold, no diamonds, no nothing. It's a waste of money. So why buy it? Huh? 
So why buy it if it's a waste of money? It's marketing. People like people don't like like it's like nobody wants to pay attention to a broke rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's it's fucked up how the how the culture Yo, is, it's man. It's crazy, man. You could be you could have a lot of money and be trash, niggas will love you. But you could be hot with no money, niggas ain't listening to that sh- bullshit. Man, so uh you so you're about to become a jeweler. Yeah, that that's one of my it's one of my things that I want to become. Like, where like you, a Johnny Dang type of jeweler. Where where are you gonna source your diamonds from? Like, how does that whole Um I I'm working with a, a big company right now who who just literally contacted me today. That's where I spent you know, I just bought a truck, so I've been all day dealing with them. Um, it's two companies. One, one's from India, and then the other ones are, are you know, you know, the Jews. It's, that's the only way you can go. <laughs> I, I was I was telling somebody about you because people, you know, you have money, so a lot of people they they have these assumptions about you. And I was like, man, one thing about Omi is he's so. He'll partner with any. He'll give a lot of people a shot as far as like partnerships and, and and things of that nature, man. Like you're one of the few people who who has an open ear for for people who have an idea. And I feel like a lot of people aren't like that when they get money. Yeah, you know, people always have the wrong assumption of me because they don't know me because I keep myself like boxed in. Like, you don't really see me like out there moving and shaking the way I'm supposed to be, or you know, dabbing up a rapper and giving them a pair of sneakers. It is like if you hit me up, I'll send you shit for free. You know what I'm saying? I, I got love for everybody, but I, I don't, I just try to stay out of the mix, you know, like, because I, I ain't trying to burn myself out out here either. But 2024, man, you're going to be seeing me out here a lot. I'm going to be in the hotel rooms with all the jewelry around my, you're going to see, uh, I'm, I'm going to get this shit lit. Oh, man. So let's, so let's get into it. Um, you had a partnership with Tory Lanez. Um, and this is the, the merchandise. We were just about, yo, we were just about to sign the same day of his verdict. We were like all week, you know, I tried not to bother him that whole week. And we were like, yo, bro, you got this. You got this. Because, you know, the whole point of a, of a court case is to, you know, is to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt, which there was a reasonable doubt there. Not, you know, I had a judge who told me one time. This woman's testimony on you was terrible, but in my heart, I feel like you did it, so you did it. That's not so. That's not the way it's supposed to go down in court. Mm-hmm. Like, the, there was an eyewitness that said the lady shot, yep. Tory shot in the air. That's one. Number two is they never said that them two was fighting. It was just so much bullshit within the case that there was enough reasonable doubt. Like, wait, wait, did he do it? They already had their minds made up when they walked in there. Because they're because if this is the case that if reasonable doubt, this is like the number one case of all time because there was no indication that Tory shot at her, and then shooting with with negligence, according to the eyewitness, he shot in the air. You know, the eyewitness said the girl was shooting. You know, and Kelsey's testimony herself, she said, "I don't want to incriminate myself," which was leading you to believe that she was the shooter. Yep. You know. And it's fucked up, you know, party, party went on Instagram and said, you know, they're judging her past. No, like the reason why th- that man didn't take a stand is because they were getting ready to bring up his past. You know, it, it, it's fucked up, man. It, it's, it's, it's a sad case. My thing is, why didn't he testify? Because that, that same reason they were threatening to bring up. He didn't want to cause any more friction with his lyrics. But l- like literally she made a rap about the same case saying that he had a bitch ass gun. You know, like it, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. That that man definitely got framed. If she shot him, it, well, if, if Kelsey shot Megan, why didn't he go on the stand and say that? Did he have to keep that image of not then, rat? Then what? Then people will be under your post calling him a rat. <laughs> like, well, you know, like it, it's, I think, yo, let me tell you something, man. That man did an amazing job of never speaking about that case. He did an amazing job. Everybody thought that he was lying when he said that was his girl. She went on their television and said, we never had no sexual relations. Like, she lied about so much things. Like, you know, he deserves another shot, benefit of a doubt. Because I, in my heart and in, in my mind, through the case, I'm not talking about from our conversations, through the case, that man didn't do it. And the pill takes, what, three, four years? So, man, I couldn't even tell you. 
I know he has to get sentenced before the appeal, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's January 27th. 27th. Yep, 27th. You know, and, and that's even if the judge is like kind of lenient on him, you know? And, and, and forget all about that. Like, he's going to get extradited. So forget Tory Lane's doing two or three years, right? He's going to get extradited, never allowed back into this country. Yep, straight to Canada. Man, it's, it's a sad, sad time. No, no DNA on the gun. No DNA. Her DNA was on a gun. His DNA was on a gun. It's, it's man, horrible, horrible, horrible. And why didn't he get charged with uh, attempted murder? The eyewitness said that, that all three of them were trying to throw her in the lake. Nobody else got charged. That, that, that district attorney had it all for him. After the verdict, uh, his dad went crazy. Went outside blaming Rock Nation, blaming Jay-Z, claiming that they targeted Tory because he didn't want to sign the Rock Nation. <laughs> I, I have no idea about that. But it, there was something that was posted where, where I think, his, I don't, I, I'm not mistaken if his dad posted it or not, where it showed that one of the members of the jury used to work for Rock Nation. Now, if that's not called for a miss, I don't see no one reporting on that. Now, if that's not called for a mistrial, then I don't know what is. He literally posted this white gentleman who worked for Rock Nation as a member of the jury. That's ridiculous. No, and, 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 and this is what bothers me the most. Two days before the verdict, you have two jurors that were swapped out. You know? That they, they, were, they were looking like they were in Tory's favor. And they swapped them out. They swapped them out. It looked like they were getting intimidated, honestly. Because one of them had to leave because of medical reasons. Like, I ain't trying to hear that shit. And then the bodyguard was missing to the day of. There's a lot of fishy man, shit going on. bro, this is, this is, when you're talking about lynching and crucifying and hanging a black man, and like, back in the day, slavery time, this is a 2020 version, of, a 2022 version of hanging a black man in front of the media with no one giving a fuck about it. Like, people rather speak about Tory than speak about Balenciaga. It's crazy. This caused a divide, too, between men and women. You know, no, the verdict came out, a lot of women. It was it, they still arguing right now as we speak. Listen, what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. You know, and let's say, like, does he deserve 20 years for two stitches? Because she walked right up, like, her life was never in danger. Obviously, nobody was trying to kill her. Twerking, twerking the next day on Instagram. And, and then what she said was that he jumped out of the driver's side and was shooting over the Escalade. Tory's little ass was shooting over the Escalade. And he was shooting over the Escalade. How your toe get gra like grazed? Horrible, horrible case. Horrible case. Horrible case. So y'all were working on a deal. How, how big was this deal? To be honest, it, it was... You know the numbers, but I, I don't want to like... But it was, it was super, super significant. Like, honestly, um, he was taking a big percentage of the company, too, but it was a lifetime deal. And, and, and to be honest, man, I, I really want to, um, because, you know, Fast Lanes is going to be a company that, you know, it wasn't just about Tory. It was, it was called Fast Lanes, but he just fit it because his, his stage name was Lanes. But um, like I said, man, even if you got to do some time, bro, like I'm, I'm still willing without his, because uh, he's not going to be out here to advertise i'm still willing to give him a portion and let him you know what i'm saying like here take that and that's you because it's just you know it's just an unfortunate situation man unfortunate yeah man this deal was massive i, I remember when you text me um we're not gonna say no numbers but eight figures yeah eight yep. figure deal eight figure deal man like it just sucks for everybody you know like we've been working at this for almost We've been in talks for six months. The deal was like for the last three months and we just got to finalize. He was like, you know, just send it through. Everything was about to be done. And then, you know, this happened. But everything happens for a reason, man, you know? Are there other rappers that you're looking forward to, to partnering now? Anybody that's going to, uh, you're going to switch out? But, um, we, we got some athletes. But right now, it's like, you know, like, 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 our, our team is like kind of hurt by it, by the whole Tory. And fuck the deal. It ain't about the deal. It's more like, you know, we got to know him. The laugh, like he was still, 
just laughing all, all night, like just a good person. Even like, you know, going through the midst of this trial wasn't allowed. He was still on house arrest, then got off of house arrest right at the end. It, it just sucks. You know what I mean? We got to just we got to get through it first and then we'll just continue to move forward. Yeah, because yeah, Christmas Day, I was sitting back thinking, I'm like, man, the guy who had it all is sitting on a damn a, a, a damn mattress on Christmas Day. Bro. His whole life changed overnight. Overnight, bro. Overnight. And, you know, I didn't question him not taking a stand because I'm like, eh, it got to be for the better. I think this case, they've done enough damage to themselves. And lo and behold, but never thought this would have happened. Yo, and it's crazy because I think on your page or, or somebody or, or fake say cheese page had posted that he he beat two out of three charges. Yeah, I think I think we got hacked, man. Uh Oh, that was your page? I, I thought it was a fake say cheese. Yeah, yeah. I think I think us and No Jumper got hacked, man. I think we got hacked. Oh man. I was like, yo. And and I was about to hit him up too, and I didn't. I was like, I didn't, you know, because he still he still got that, that gun case. Dang, what a bad time, man. Man, free Tory. Yeah, free Tory. Shout out to Hollywood Leak, man. That that dude been relentless at putting that deal together for me, man. Like you have no idea. That's like that's Tory's brother right there. So Nike suing you. Yep. And they reached out to you months ago, right? No, bro. They listen. They reached out to me um November 5th. And we had to November 11th. Or was it October 5th? It was about 2 months ago. They reached out and said you got 5 days to um to to hit us back. We hit them back. And then they went straight to suing. It's it's more so they're tired of you know of all these replica sneakers. I, I, like I, I get what they're going through, but um, I think we made enough significant changes to not get sued. Um, I don't know. It's still my favorite company in the world. I ain't gonna lie. No matter what happens, I'm still rocking. I'm still rocking Nike. It's my favorite company, bro. How much are they suing you for? Did they say? Nah, 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 not yet. We, uh, we still got to come to the day. Bro, we're so far away. It, this case can take two, three, four years, five years. I'm just trying to end it on an amicable, amicable stage. Like, you know, just we, we're trying to come to the table now. They're like, no, nah, we still want to see how much money y'all made. So we got we to get all that together for them. But hopefully, you know, we ended in a good thing. Like right now, they threw me into the case of like every other person selling bootlegs. I'm like, ho, 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 ho. We're totally different companies, yo. We, we got to either, you got to get us. So that's going to take a while of us getting up out of everybody else's suit because they sued a couple of us together. I ain't got nothing to do with them. Now, you said that you switched the panels. Yeah. To where as though, to where as though you can't get sued. 100%. And you told another guy the same thing and he, he, didn't, he didn't do it. Yeah, and, and, and the, the crazy part about it is that I had changed my panels from the very beginning. Then to, for me trying to be a smart ass, I changed them to the same panels that the other guy had. Just to, you know, to, just to be an asshole. And, you know, kind of sucks. But yeah, we're going back. We're going back. <laughs> when you get this, when, you, when they sue you, what, what goes through your head? I, believe it or not, I... I was like, fuck it. This is all it's going to do is just make, make the situation bigger for me. Make me more. Honestly, that's the first thing that went to my mind because I'm like, yo, like I just watched, I don't want to say no names, but I just watched Nike close a deal on a lawsuit that they were suing somebody for Air Force One. And I literally can hold it up to the Air Force One. And I'm like, what did the fuck they really change? And they came to an amazing resolution. The, the guy can still sell the shoe. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm, whatever he did, I want that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, whatever and, he and, did, and, I want that. And this is a guy from Pittsburgh, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy from Pittsburgh. Do do you know him personally? Uh, we, we talked a few times, but I, I I really feel like um whatever deal he got, man, he got a great deal. So I want that one. You gonna holler at him and see what he did? Nah, he, he won't. He won't. He don't. That's one thing about him. He doesn't like to specify. He, like, cause you know what I'm saying. That that stuff is like kind of private. So me and him talked about. It, he said, "I can't talk to you about that situation." 
But whenever you're done, you know, we can work something out. We can do a collab or something. He's a good guy, though, man. Shout out to uh, John Geiger. Yeah. You know, I was at your crib um, when you released a pair. Um, this was like two years ago on like Halloween, I think. Around Halloween or, or some, some shit like that. Um, it, it, it went crazy, man. Like, it sold out, I think, in like two hours. Yeah, it was. And, and, and we had a lot of pairs of those. You know what I mean? Like, and now it's, it's doing even better, bro. Honestly. Like, it, it's to the point where, like, like, um, I end up just, you know what? This pair right here, let's give it half off for the people who've been buying and try to give them a break, too. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, like, I'm going to start this company, Fast Lanes, and out of every 20 shirts, two will be for free. So I'm going to always give percentage of, like, the company's money. I'm going to always give it back to people. Or, like, let's say we release a pair of jeans, and we release 100 pair of jeans, and these jeans made us $30,000. 20,000 in profit, $5,000. When somebody goes scan those jeans, they win five grand. Like, oh shit. It's just, it's just giving a portion back because I've never seen no company do that. People forget. People forget who puts them in position. Is, is Nike claiming that y'all are hurting their brand? Bro, we can't, we can't fucking, we can't scratch the surface on their fake patent leathers. Like, like bro, like, we can't do nothing to that. The reason why Nike's hurting is because right now Russia's at war and 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 that's a big big market for Nike. 30 to, what was it? What did what they report? 30% of, mm. of of less sneakers are being bought because of because of that region. They got nothing to do with us, bro. Like like that's just crumbs to them. Man, damn. Nike, Nike, Nike. How many shoes do you think you've sold? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't sell nothing. <laughs> yeah, my bad. My bad. No, 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 no. We like well, uh, we do good. Um twenty, thirty thousand, maybe forty, I don't know. We we sold we sold a lot. I mean we gotta show them anyway the numbers. We gotta show them the numbers, so it's not like I'm gonna fucking hide it, but yeah, we sold a lot, honestly. Remember, yo, I'm the only, like, I fucked up the independent shoe game. Everybody laughed at me in the beginning. Everybody did this. Everybody was doing pre-orders. Like, people may not like me. People may like the other guy over me. But, and this goes to his fans. Without me jumping into the picture, you wouldn't be getting your shoes that fast. Like, this, mm. nigga, this nigga was pre-ordering shoes, sending them out three months later. Like, I got, I came up with cash. And, and look, I release every Friday. I release four times a month on Friday. I'm shipping them out by Monday. I made everybody get their, their weight up. Everybody, nobody's really doing pre-orders no more. He's buying the shoes cash now too. He has no choice. He can't keep up with me. It's a fact because he ain't dropping four times a month. He ain't got enough money to play with me. But I'm being honest. <laughs> but like he ain't pre-ordering no more. So every, like, the end consumer is the one that's winning at the end of the day. Because we, all, we all get our shoes faster. You you outsell him, but I think like his his business model was different. I think with Cool Kai was more like a um a exclu exclusive ex to be exclusive. Bro, that exclusive shit. Let me tell you something, bro. And I'm gonna be honest with you. That ain't nothing exclusive. The man is buying 300 pairs, 400 pairs. We're in the same factory. He he puts them up for five minutes, stops it, and then he has them sitting in his warehouse in Jersey. And that's what he's been releasing the whole time. He forgets that he, he takes pictures of the inside of his warehouse. All his unreleased shit that, that did not sell is sitting there. He got to release them somehow. He just thinks he's a marketing genius. And that shit, people want the fucking sneakers. And when your window closes, your window closes. Get rid of the product. Move on to the next thing. He's like, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know. Uh, is the quality the same? Bro, a hundred million percent. It, bro, we're in the same exact factory. In the same exact factory. Whether he wants to believe, like, bro, buy a pair of mine, buy a pair of his. I guarantee you they're the same shoe. A million percent. I'm just way cheaper. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy, man. I remember it's we like Black this. owned, black owned, black owned, black owned. Nigga, that's a motherfucker in China making this shit. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's crazy. I remember this shit started on Instagram, and I, I posted this shit on Say Cheese, and it started out as a joke, and you trolling them. Bro. So now you making millions off of this sneaker. 
Bro, and let me tell you something. I, I even tried to reach out to him two and a half months ago. I'm like, yo, all I want is an apology. And we'll, we, we'll end it right now. I wouldn't even touch the shoe no more. And he wouldn't even respond back to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's a child. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tried to end it back then. Just with an apology. I just want an apology. You know what I'm saying? He did it to himself. Because I'm telling you, we split the market. You would have stopped selling your air omies if he would have apologized? That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. You would have stopped your whole operation if he would have apologized? A million percent. I got, we got a million other, like we, right now we got like what, three other pairs of shoes about to come out. Two which are fast lanes. You know what I'm saying? Like I hired a, a, a ex Yeezy employee. That's like literally the one sitting there. He's in the UK right now, matter of fact. He's drawing up our shoes as we speak. When you got sued by Nike, uh, Soldier Boy went live. Man, he's a clown. <laughs> he says, I'm the first rapper not to get sued by Nike. You're the first rapper wearing aluminum foil. Dad, you heard the way that shit clings? That shit sounds terrible, by the way. Yo, I wasn't even clowning him. But yo, yo, I, I wasn't even clowning him when, 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 when them ugly ass shoes, the soldier stars was out. I'm like, yo, bro, you need my help. He didn't say nothing. He stood quiet up until like niggas wait until like something bad happens to just come out of the woodwork. He could have addressed it then. And I DM'd him too. I'm like, yo, bro, you, you need my help, bro. Them, I've never seen nobody walking around in no soldier stars. <laughs> yo, them Jones ugly as hell, yo, they, bro. they look like soup. They look like, and I fuck with Soldier, but them, they look like supers, man. No, nah, I like Soldier Boy too, but <laughs> that, like, listen, wearing aluminum chains, and you're the f first rapper and only rapper to wear Soldier Stars. I guarantee you, nobody will wear that shit. Not even for free. Not even for free. Not even for free. I t I'm telling you. He got to give me at least five bands to put him on. So wait, wait, wait. You, you, you reached out to him for some advice. No, I reached out to help him. Them Charles is bad. Wait, he didn't get back to you? Hell no. He's seen it. But, and then he waited until five, four or five months later to Nike said something. And then he, you could tell he was holding that shit in the whole time. That motherfucker's like, oh, fuck your fat ass. Yo. Yeah, cause it, cause in the live he said, yeah, niggas be trying to help uh, reach out to me for advice and help, but now they get sued. Why would I need I his said, help? Then, like, look, he could have got sued by Nintendo when he made that little bullshit Nintendo Game Boy, and then he comes out with a fucking lemonade that nobody ever drank in their fucking life. He always like he's the only entrepreneur that makes products and never goes to stores. <laughs> he just has that shit in his house. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, get the fuck out of here. They got a closet full of soldier stars. They ain't never gonna sell none. Oh man. So I know Soldier Boy is gonna watch this. I mean, can y'all ever team up on some shit? Cause you're cause you gave Tory Lane. Like, listen, I will help him, but don't come around. I'm gonna bring out the motherfucking diamond tester. Like, don't come around me with that bullshit on. But nah, nah, nah. In all seriousness, nah, I'll definitely like, bro, I don't want no money. Like that people think that if I come in the picture, that I want something out of it. Like, bro, I am good. I have my own bread. I don't want, I'll point you to where the fuck, because whoever been pointing you to that factory has been fucking you up, bro. Now, I will definitely help him. I mean, yeah, I think a Soldier Boy collab will be dope. I think a Chief Keith collab will be dope. Very influential uh, people. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I'm actually um, about to do a collab with, uh, with um, Too Rare. He, but, you know, uh, yeah. I've been talking to Peter, I've been talking to Peter Pan, which is, uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The other guy who does the sneakers with me is very, very strategic. Anybody I'm about to work on, if I go online and say somebody's name, he pulls up and tries to give them stuff for free. Like, listen, ain't nobody trying to do collabs for free. Ain't nobody, nobody wants you to give them a pair of fucking sneakers. I split percentages 50-50 down the middle. And I put up all the money. And I do everything. Nobody wants no fucking pair of sneakers like he just did a like the other guy just did a collab with chief keith you know what i'm saying i mean i'm in talks with um peter pan for uh for two rare okay but um hopefully we make that happen but don't let nobody cheat you listen collabs is 50 percent. i don't care if you got five second uh five records sold or if you got a million records so i'm still splitting the same thing with everybody
That's how, that's how you grow. I want niggas in Philly to really tap in, though. I want, like, my city. I want to do collabs in my city. You know what I mean? Before, before I start branching out all over the world, I'd rather give niggas in Philly 50%. Mm, you know what I'm saying? That's real. Tap my city in. That's solid. Um, Kanye, no longer with Adidas. Independent. Adidas, Adidas right now is sitting on $530 million worth of Yeezys that they can't sell. Um, Listen, what, this what, is honestly, um, Kanye fought hand, tooth, and nail to try to be, you know, uh, recognized by the powerhouses. Remember that was Sway? Sway, you ain't got the answers. And Sway told him, just go straight to consumer yourself. Kanye didn't like, and, and, and right before he got canceled, he wanted out of Adidas. Now, perfect timing for Adidas to, to, to cut him because they wanted to keep the money that they had put away. It may be $500 million worth of inventory, but let's, let's be honest. That's nothing more than $30, $40 million. Right. But by, by their markups, it's $500 million. But they got to freeze over $250 million of his real dollars. They stopped payment to all his companies. That's why I was able to snatch up two sneaker designers. Mm. And, 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 and it's costing me $450,000 a year for these two guys. And I got them under a three-year contract. Um, I think this is the best thing that ever happened to Kanye. Now, but when he goes like, like, listen, Kanye is my favorite person in the world. But when he goes on there like talking some bullshit sometimes, he, he can go, he can get a little too much. Like all he got to do is just hush, bring out a new, a new Yeezy, which he's entitled, he owns the company, and go straight to consumer. What else more do he need? He don't need nobody else. Like, bro, you got us doing it with fucking, like with nothing, with crumbs of what he got. You think he can't do it? But he got so much going on in his mind, you know, like he needs to just let go of the past. I'm telling you, bro, if he lets go of that shit and, and, and can be Kanye of the past, bro, he, he can hit levels. Think about it. I think what he made, uh, uh, Adidas reported that he made that Adidas had $35 billion from the Yeezy brand and Kanye only had $1 billion. So that means they 30 times your money. Man. Now, you could have did that for your damn self. His damn self. I'm telling you, bro. Like he can, If anybody in the world can do it, it's him. He just needs to chill the fuck out, offending people. What do you think Kanye should do next? Honestly, if I was in the position of Kanye right now, I will go grab three or four good people. I'll, I'll travel somewhere quiet, Italy, right? Get a room full of Wacoms, start drawing, designing, and then I'll take my happy ass to China for six, six months to a year to really learn the process of shoes, to really learn how to make them. And bro, what that man is going to walk like, he's, he, he knows what he wants. He's a visionary. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's designed all his shoes, but he knows exactly what he wants. He's going to come out of the air like super incredible. He can make he's so gonna much more everything. money. So much more money than he could do. He could make so much more money by himself than when he was at Adidas and Nike. The only thing that, that's going to like kind of restrict him is the one thing that black people was never taught. Like we know how to make money, right? But we don't know how to grow globally. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens when he starts talking about Jewish people. And they own all the distrib distributing companies around the world. He's going to need some distribution. And with, with him doing what he's doing, he's not going to. So me personally, what I would do is I would go sit down in a meeting with Damon John from FUBU. Mm. Because he has distribution all over the world. Partner up with Damon John. Shut the fuck up and let him do the distribution. Y'all split a company in, in, in a good way. Damon John will make sure they're all over the world. You put your brand and your face behind it. Go out and make a fucking another album. You know what I'm saying? And, and make a real album. And let that sell the shoes. I'm telling you, I, I like Kanye like that instantly. But he needs to partner up with another black man that can save his image right now. Because like, you know what I'm saying? Like he doesn't really go to back for black people either. You know what I'm saying? The only people that he really do need. So I, 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 me personally, I would partner up with Damon John. Because uh, just the distribution channels that he does have infrastructure that he has man that's a solid business move right there no nah, facts fubu too i mean like you said is he staying with his people 
They ain't letting somebody, people. man, bro, it, it, bro, they will, them two. Lights over. He won't even be on Shark Tank no more. That's how much money he making. Now after that, Kyrie Irving stuck by Kanye's side. He lost his Nike deal. He's currently independent, and he sat down with another black designer. Is it Saya? Saya? Yeah. And, Con and and Kyrie's thinking about partnering with him. Like to be honest, it's like. <laughs> It, it like to me, it'll be hard for me to do a deal with anybody in 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 the scale of a Kyrie of a or of a of a Kanye, because remember when you take on those responsibilities, your pockets better be limitless, and and, and you know what I'm saying, because it, it it'll be almost impossible to feed the people that are my, like you you will really have to come in with a good even like, let's say they were in talks in talks is good. And you know what I'm saying? I fuck with I fuck with Devlin from Sire, amazing guy. But you better have some real financial backers behind that deal because you will want things to move along quick. You know what I mean? And um I I'll be I'll be scared to take that deal. I wouldn't do it personally. Not yet. Cause it's it's a big, it's a big, big gamble. It's a huge gamble. Now with Kyrie. Got his own bank account. Now, if they came in and he's like, I'm going to put, you know, $10, $15 million in escrow and let's get this ball rolling, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'll break, you know, sire, you're the face of the company, is under your shoe structure. We do 60 30 my way. Or, I mean, well, 70 30 my way. You, you design the shoes, you, you go through all the manufacturing, give me the pricing. I can see that happening. But for, for a company to take everything and throw it behind, on a, on a, it ain't even a streetwear shoe. It's a basketball shoe. It would be hard. That would be groundbreaking. Um, no, it would. You got to start somewhere, though. You know, even like, and I want to ask you this, too. Master P had his own shoe for Zion Williamson. Remember the, the, I, I the leopard sneakers? The, the red leopard sneakers he had for Zion? Um, remember remember uh, LeVar Ball? They had the triple Bs. People laughed at them. It seems like we never supported a black-owned sneaker out the gate. Nah, but Sia si got these shoes called the Trez Ones. Fire. You know what I'm saying? Like he he can like he he got he can really design. So you know what I mean? And and that's what's always gonna happen. Master P, let me tell you, man, when um it, it's a hard place to talk about him, man, because I I know someone that uh, worked with him on some sneakers um, and straight up took the whole shoe. Didn't want to pay him to make the shoes. Sia si knows the whole story because Sia si hooked me up with him. Man, just like not, not, not too good for business in my eyes. You know what I mean? And now with his son coming out with all those allegations, I, I believe it a million percent because I see shit behind closed doors. That motherfucker, I would never want to be even at a table with him. Because that's not the way you conduct business, especially if you're burning your own kids and shit. And I've seen what he single-handedly did to James. James is a black gentleman who, who lives in China. He lives in China. And um, Matt, he, he sent Master P a, a big order, like a $100,000 order of sneakers. On, like, you know, thinking, that's, this is fucking Master P. Burnt, burnt them on the whole thing until he signed over the rights of the shoes. And then I don't know if he collected payment by then, but it, it was bad. It was bad. It, it got dark for that guy because he's a black guy from America who moved to China to live out his dreams, you know, selling and designing sneakers. Burned them. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and ain't, ain't no allegedly. You know what I'm saying? You can't and Master P anything. was supposed to pay him for the design. No. So he was just ordered. He, the dude designed the shoes, did everything, sent the shoes. The, the check was supposed to be cut. Okay. Never cut it. He says, if I don't get this design, if you don't if you don't give me the patents for this design, I ain't paying for it. Basically mm. strong armed them. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And I don't and and, and all them shoes is fucking ugly anyway. They're all fucking trash. <laughs> like, bad business, man. Everywhere you go, man, like I, I used to say this a lot, man. I met my hero once, man, and there was nothing more than a crackhead with a cape. You know, everything ain't what it cracked up to be anymore, man. Uh, Lil Romeo recently spoke out on his dad, Master P, and he says, 
Um, he never touched his own money because it went to pay Masterpiece taxes. All my siblings are broke. Never had money for college. We're living check to check. I believe it. I believe it. And the most important thing that came out of that whole thing is like towards the end. He like if you look up like the history of rap snacks, it literally says that you know James Lindley sold it, you know, and one of the acquirers was a uh, little Romeo. So for the whole time, I'm thinking little old Romeo was the main owner of the rap snacks. You know what I'm saying? And he just came out and said, James, after 15 years, James Lindley, which is an amazing person, by the way, that dude is 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 literally the shit. Yeah, he's, he, he's from he's from Philly too, right? Yeah, yeah, but he he's he down in like I went down to his office in Meadow uh, in Miami. In Miami, yep. Real good dude. Like, you know what I mean? Um James is incredible, man. Like, but you know, James he he what, what he said, James is making sure that I get my first check ever cut. Yep, I see. For, for a company that I endorsed and, and promoted for 15 years without ever making a penny. It's crazy. And, and and no, everyone is saying how ungrateful he is. Like, no one's checking up on his mental. Like, this man, this kid can be pro possibly about to kill himself. Like, you don't know what's going on in that kid's mind. And the first thing, are oh, you ungrateful? Like, no, he's a grown man. He, he's not a kid anymore. He's a grown man who, who, who shielded his father for years. And he just once was, you know, what's his, was rightfully his. And I'm, I'm glad that, you know, James is able to give him that because somebody else would be like, nigga, you take it up with your dad. I, you ain't getting shit from me. I already paid that 15 years ago. You know, for, for James to even step up and like, yo, I'm going to start making sure you get your royalties. It, 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 it's dope to me, honestly. Yeah, man, I, I hate to see family go at it online. You hate it, but it's kind of what he needed because everyone... When you think of Master P, you think of, you put him in the faces of like a Magic Johnson, of, 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 of great businessmen that you don't, yep. that you will never think could ever, in reality, he's no fucking Magic Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Just another piece of shit with money. That, that, that's how I see it. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Uh, Grant Cardone, real estate mogul. Mm -hmm. He said men, men should feel ashamed if they don't make $400,000 a year. Do you agree? No. No. Men should feel ashamed if they don't get up in the morning and go get their ass to work. Everybody ain't got the luxury to make $400,000. You know what I'm saying? You don't. Like, I think... Like, I, I remember back in the days, I used to see commercials on, like, uh, on, like, tra a, lot, a lot of more traits. Like, now, like, everything they're pushing now is meant to go, go drive trucks. But, like, yo, it's hard for me to get a carpenter. It's hard for me to get an electrician. Like, I don't even, I want my kids to be fucking electricians. Like, electricians can make up to 160000 a year. You know what I'm saying? We out here too busy chasing and killing each other, man. I think men need traits. So, no, men shouldn't make, like, he, like, like, this, like, that's a piece of shit things to say, honestly. Everybody ain't making 400000 a year unless you're, what, in the top 8% of the world? You know what I'm saying? The 1% can make what? What is it? A million dollars a year? That, that's, that's just degrading to men. Why? Because they're not buying his fucking bullshit fucking courses? That's what you want? You want somebody to buy your bullshit course? Piece of shit? That's some piece of shit shit to say. Yeah, you know, social media made it to where as though if you're not rich or living a rich lifestyle, you're not, you have no value to life. And I don't agree I'm, I'm with a, that. I'm going to tell you right now, man. And, and this is why I've been sticking to like lately, I just activated my Facebook back. I only got like 700 friends on Facebook, you know, on, on, on Instagram, I got a, like a million 70,000 or some bullshit like that. Like, I don't have to pretend it's okay to be normal. It's a, like, it's okay to be a fucking normal human being. Like people won't post a picture unless they're like laced the fuck up. It's like, exactly. we, we need to wake the fuck up out of that bullshit, man. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it, it got us living super depressed, bro. It got us living depressed. It, it got us making decisions that we shouldn't be making. Niggas is robbing, stealing, just to go into the strip club, throw some money, take a picture. Like, it's fucked, bro. Society's fucked up right now. And it ain't going to stop until, like, you know, at least Instagram starts changing it up the way Facebook used to be. It's okay to be fucking normal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to my nephew, and um, he's working a little job right now, and uh, he was just saying it's not enough. It's not enough money. And um, 
he said, uh, Instagram doesn't make it any better. You get on Instagram, you seeing people in the new shoes, you seeing people in in the in 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 these rented Lamborghinis and Yeah, listen, they they got the new shoes, but they're sleeping on the air mattress. You know what I'm saying? Or they got all this jewelry and all these cars and got nowhere to live, nowhere to stay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, you don't really know what they're getting into. You know what I'm saying? Degrading themselves. Having to put people under, rob niggas, just to look good on Instagram. So don't, don't even follow that trend. I'd rather you yeah. work for $18 an hour, my nigga, and, and get it the right way. And that way, you know, take life slow. Everybody wants the fast life. That's why I had to take a step back. And I'm like, all right, I got to slow down a little bit if I can quarterback this shit yeah. right. Because the faster I keep going, man, it's like, I look up like, damn, I, I spent $7 million on what? The slower you are in life, the more you can predict things, how, how shit's going to come and go. And being at the bottom is a blessing too, man, because you get to see who actually really fuck with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, my nephew's 19, and I'm like, Oh, man, he's Yo, a baby. You're a kid right now. This shit right here builds you a character. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to be this... They seeing all these rappers with all this jewelry on that's teenagers. Everybody, I don't know, man. I just be trying to tell people it's okay to work a job. It's okay to hey, build listen, he's 19 years and think old. Long-term. Honestly, what I, what I would tell my son at 19, and, and, and this is being realistic, I would tell my son to go, go get an apprenticeship. Go be an apprentice. If you can draw your ass off, go be an apprentice and go, go to a tattoo shop. One day you can own a, you can own a shop. You know what I'm saying? Like, be an apprentice. Go, if, if you got somebody who does eight, like my HVAC guy, I think what he made last year, his company did like seven, eight million HVAC. Like, you could be a millionaire without, you know, without clout. Yeah. Bro, you, it, it's real things. My, my framing guy did 12 million last year. Like, it, you, things that you don't ever think that you can make money off of. Like, just take an apprenticeship somewhere in carpentry, houses are getting built fast. Because a lot of these dudes can't afford this on Instagram. Is college a waste of time? For some, for some, I think uh, unless you want to, you have to get a criminal law degree or if you want like to be a doctor, I don't see no other way to, to go to college for, for what? Fuck are they teaching me algebra before? I got a calculator. Who the fuck's ever using that shit? Hmm. Fuck are you teaching me history for? I mean, I'm trying to move forward to the, past, to the future. Like, Nah. I think I think um, the best thing right now is apprenticeships. I think you should, if you're gonna go to college and be paying a student loan for fucking for the rest of your life, go work off three years for free, and then and then you know get a little side job, a little side hustle to to maintain your bills. But those three years are gonna be the best time of your life because you get to see number one if you love it, and if you're gonna stick to it. I, me personally, I, I'll let all my kids get apprenticeships anywhere. NBA young boy and Fredo Bang recently squashed beef, man. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. I fuck, I, listen, I fuck with Fredo and I fuck with NBA. So that's a beautiful thing. A lot of people were, were well, it was mixed reviews. It was a lot of people who felt like, how you, how you going to let him kill your homie and, 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 and squash beef with somebody who killed your dog? Bro, man, we, we, lost, we lost a lot of people with, with a lot of wars, man. Like, it's... For what? Continue it for what? Like, people, people love to see the drama, man. I just... It, 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 negativity sells, man, but to what point? For them to lose their lives and then the beef still continues? Like, nah, man, fuck that shit. Bro, the streets done tricked me out of my position a lot of times, bro. I ain't letting that... Bro, that's a beautiful... Listen, that's more honorable than, than going to war. It's easy to go to war. It's easy to kill a nigga. It ain't... Listen, it's hard for a man to apologize. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, bro, I apologize. I stepped in your shoes. My, like, you ain't got to beef for what? That, bro, I'm myself, bro. I, I don't beef for nobody unless I absolutely have to. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. You know, especially the fans. The fans were upset. The fans love watching the train work. Yeah, bro. To, to, like, for what, though? If, if, y'all, if y'all love NBA so more, if y'all love NBA so much, y'all go crash out. <laughs> See you crash out for him. Like nah, bro. That shit. That shit's corny. This ain't the '90s no more. That like, that was the time where like gangsters were idolized. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody in the neighborhood was like, yo, that's that nigga right there. Now this shit's corny. 
Because you know somebody's finna tell anyway. For what? There's no point of being a gangster no more, man. Either you're going to be rich or, or you're going to go crash out. Pick one because you ain't getting both. I learned that a long time ago. Niggas is still willing to go, like, for what? I've never seen a millionaire gangster before. And if mm. I did, he ain't living too long or he in the feds right now. And, and that sucker nigga is the one fucking his wife. For real, respect them, like, for what? For you to have a name in jail? Who the fuck wants a title in jail? Sit around, child, we all eating the same food. Yo, I used to get it in back. Like, nobody give a fuck about that, nigga. I'm trying to go home and get some ass. <laughs> nobody want to hear that shit. Not yeah, me. I think them coming together, man, that was a historic event, man. Um, nah, it really is. And, You're from and, Louisiana, you know, that right? Be, yeah, they're from Louisiana. Man, that's a beautiful thing, bro. That's a beautiful thing. Now, speaking of Philly, man, over 500 murders. Number one in the country, what, two years in a row? Yep. Bro, it's, it's to the point where, like, I can't even cut the news on. You know what I'm saying? And when I go down there, bro, it's like I got to call, like, 20 people. Yo, be on alert. I'm coming through. You know, it, it's, it, it's scary out there. But it's called gen gentrification. You know what I'm saying? Philly was more of a spread open city. If, if you were from Lower Mary, you know you're from Philly. You're from Lower yeah. Marion. You stick to your side. But now with gentrification, you know, from Brown Street, like any, they're just pushing everybody into the same blocks. All new buildings is coming up. And it just, it's, just, it's going to be war for the next 10, 15 years. Then guess what? Then 10 years from now, you're going to be seeing a white person walking a puppy right down the street in Kensington. What the fuck is going on? That's, that's called gentrification. Yeah. You know, they push everybody together and bring the property taxes up. The, the city's at war. Right? Ain't no money in the city. You, you don't think it's the rap music and Instagram? Nah, definitely not. Bro, it, you, you, know, you know who started this? Like Walmart. Walmart. It crushed us all. Believe it or not, it's Walmart. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're from Philly. You, you never used to go to um, Germantown back in the days? How every little corner, how every store in Germantown was flourishing, popping? Mm hmm Their hardware stores. There's somebody yep. selling oils in one store, garments. And then you go to Kensington, Fifth Street. All those stores were booming. Now they all turned into fucking little medical, little medical things. Damn. Like, there's no more entrepreneurship. There's no more small businesses. They mm. came in, Walmart came in and crushed every small business. Like, you selling the screws for $2? Like, I go to Walmart, get it for 50 cents. Home Depot, it, bro, I'm telling you, it crushed out the middle class completely. Damn. So, if That's you think deep. about it, yeah, bro, so if you think about it, like, there used to be two little restaurants on Germantown that are no longer there. They got to come, like, no, I ain't trying to buy no platters from your mom's kitchen, nigga. I, you know what I'm saying? Bro, it, that's the way it happened, bro. If you think about it, you used to drive down Germantown, every store was popping. Every store. I used to go over here, go get my Jabot jeans, over there to go get some fake jerseys. You know what I'm saying? It was popping, but now it's the middle, they ain't no middle class. Either you poor I, or you got a couple dollars. I think the internet fucked it up. I think internet and I think Chicago drill music fucked up a lot of inner cities. I feel like now you can't even have a you can't even have a misunderstanding with anybody on social media because it's going to lead to when I see you, it's, it's up. I think, I think social media made the world a, a, a dangerous place. That's true, too. But when you see a family come from money, you don't really see any of them really going at it. And like, I, I used to hear that term when I was young all the time. Like, um, money is the root of all evil. Like, no, the lack of money is. Because niggas that get money really trying to stay out the way. They really not trying to, like, gang bang and war. It's mm. the niggas that got no money. It's the dudes that are out there just, you know, like, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take over this block. I mean, drum music does have a lot to do with it. You know, smoking your ops and, and, and you know, coming around the block a few times. But in reality, man, it's our middle class been crushed, bro. There's no more entrepreneur. Like, bro, like, you walk out of Philly, honestly... There's no motivation. It's like, what the fuck do I do from here? I used to walk out the door like that all the time. I used to walk out and see the sick. Bro, I still go around sometimes. And the dudes that I used to see in 2012, I swear to God in my life, they're still in the same spot. 
they're just a little fatter now and older. Like, like dudes got it like stuck in their mind how, how to live off the system. Or right, I get 32 perks this month. I'm going to sell them all. Like, they have the same routine. Every two weeks, I get my welfare check. Every two, like, they have it down to a science. Like, like a home health care. I take care of my mom. I get that 700 every two weeks. They're content with life. And, bro, you can't, like, if you want to be something in life, you can't complain. You can't be content. Okay, listen. Okay, if you were fucking abused when you were a child. Okay, if your mom was a crackhead. Get the fuck up and do something. Because if not, my nigga, you, you're going to be stuck like everybody else is. Man, that, that's real. Um, now, Balenciaga, you went viral, man. Um, you know, because no celebs were really talking about that shit. Let's go ahead and get that overstood. No celebrities were talking about that. Um, you burnt all your Balenciagas. All of them. I, I even had an argument with my girl because I'm like, yo, yours is next, my nigga. She's like, I just have, like, you know, I'll give her a pass. She said she didn't have no time. But, like, she, like get rid of that shit. And, um, yo, believe it or not, she got some fire-ass pictures that she want to post. But it's with her Balenciaga bag. I'm like, just blur that shit. It, it's just, for someone who, who's as calculated as, as a big company that's been around since, what, 1901 or something like that? 1904? Forgive me if I'm, like, fucking up the year. Like, this is a Spaniard country that's been around. A Spaniard company that's been around for over 100 years, my nigga. You know, every prop on that table was ordered. Specifically ordered. That's why they dropped that lawsuit. Everything was specifically ordered. Everything was specifically placed. The, the head, the, the lead designer from Balenciaga has always been doing weird shit with children on her Instagram page. That's why she had blocked it. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, no, bro. They're into some weird... Like, I don't understand why you got all that money and you want children. Like, do y'all drink children's blood to try to stay younger? Like, I don't understand Man, what's going on, bro. That's what they say. They're into some weird shit up there, bro. And I, I, I just... I got, I got five kids, man. And I'm cool. Especially, like, like... I said this on my YouTube channel. You know, I was touched by some. I've never, never been penetrated in none of that weird shit. But I, I was touched when I was younger, so it has a, a special place in my heart. I don't, I don't fuck around with pedophiles, man. I don't. I don't fuck around with pedophiles, man. And I recently found out that, that, I had put out a YouTube video, and I had one working for me, and he never told me that he was on a registered sex offenders list. He just told me he just got out of prison on some weird shit, man. This dude ended up forcefully raping a child. And he was working for you? Probably about for like four weeks, three, four weeks. And I fired immediately. Mm. He said, damn, you're judging me. I ain't judging you. The judge judged you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You're, you're, you're on this list for the rest of your life, my nigga. You could have at least warned us. Like, and that's against the law, too. If you're a sex offender, my nigga, my building is directly a block and a half away from a, from a, from a, from a school. School. You never let me know for your employment. You know what I'm saying? It's, bro, it's bad. Like, if you're going to be hiring people to be around your children, get background checks. They're a lot easier and a lot cheaper than what you think. This ain't 1990. You can easily get these online. But, you know, um... It's it's bad, man. It's bad. I, I don't want I don't want those kind of people around my children. Yeah, a lot of rappers will I didn't see no rappers speak out about it. Bro, I've seen a couple of rappers still wearing the shit. Yeah, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like uh I think I saw a picture of A Boogie the other day in Starless. He had a Balenciaga. I'm like, God damn, bro, take that Fabulous. off. I don't know if somebody ever made him aware of it. Or I don't know if they live in a bubble. I'm not just saying his name just to say because I fuck with his music, but like, bro, take that shit off. Take that shit off. You don't understand what it represents. I am cool off of it. Did you ever figure out who burglarized your house and stole almost a million dollars? Still, that shit is... Like, I'm still waiting on that, bro. I mean, it, 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 it even went up to the FBI. So that's like a, that's a real case, bro. You know, a lot of people thought that, that, that I was exaggerating, that... This amount of money wasn't taken. It's like, no, bro. Like, this shit is not. Now the case went up. It went up a notch. 
I'm still trying to find out who took it. But, you know, like, that made me live a lot smarter, though. So I didn't have to get robbed at gunpoint for it. Number two, I don't keep cash around no more. So it is what it is. Do, do you have an idea? Bro, believe it or not, I had over, at that time, over 12 employees that were just fired, let go. I would have to blame each and every one of them. So, like, what do you do? You just get up and go make some more money. Enjoy it. 920000 Did you sit and watch and see if they, you know, spending habits were different? I ain't got time for that shit, bro. They got to watch me spend my shit. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that money been gone. That money probably been gone. I hope they enjoying it, though. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, they get to uh, build one of those uh, spots in Germantown and keep that money coming in. Um, Glorilla, she recently went viral for uh, hiring and well, looking for an assistant and uh, paying them five fifty a week. That's a little on the low side. Uh, I mean, you got to do think about it. They do get to travel for free. Uh, we don't know the specifications. Do they get health insurance? Do they get because there's people right now that make thirty two dollars an hour, right? And they work for a union that only bring home eight hundred dollars every two weeks, and and their and their hourly wage is high. You get I don't know if that comes with like yo you eat for free, you travel with me for free. I mean, fuck, you get free weed too. Yeah, that's expensive. You know, you get, <laughs> you, you get connections, huh? Yeah, and, and you get to be around people. People like people, the only people they complain are people who just, who want, who are kind of her pockets. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you get to chill around them all day. Make, I mean, that, I, I, you better live with her too, because you ain't paying no motherfucking rent with that little bit of ass money. But um, starting, starting salary for me, it should be around 20, 25 an hour for an assistant that gets to like eat with you. And you know what I'm saying? That, that's what I will pay. Now, like now, if, if you're with me for, for two years, three years, then I'll then you'll go on salary seventy a year, eighty a year. Okay, so twenty five an hour for forty hours. What's that? Let me see. Shit, twenty an hour. It'll be that's about a thousand. That's a thousand a week. It's a, it's a little over a thousand a week. But that's like cool said, for that's cool for somebody that's still staying with moms. No, doesn't have a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, but somebody had wrote. Oh no, that wasn't her. I think that was Summer Walker. You have to be white. Oh you yeah, have to be able know. to build shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think a thousand a week is cool. No, nah, that's actually, more than, bro. People ain't making that right now. I think a thousand a week is is good. That's good, and it ain't gonna hurt her pockets. Yeah. I think a thousand a week is good. I got four um, people on my payroll making over that a week. Mm. So Damn. that shouldn't hurt her at all. Before we get out of here, you got your name from cars in the beginning. A lot of people nationally, internationally, they found you by having a crazy car fleet, multiple Lamborghinis, multiple Hellcats, multiple McLarens and all type of crazy shit. It's, you really fell back from that. We don't see you buy cars like you used to. I don't because, like, I, I, I like me personally, I, I enjoy like Mercedes. You know what I'm saying? I got my, I got my 580 right now, which is brand new. I just bought a Maybach. Uh, my girl got a G wagon. I got a Supra. I got a TRX. Um, what else do I got? I, I got a few cars, but it's like. I'm already growing out of that. Like, you got to understand, at the time where I was, like, accumulating my car collection, I had just finished selling my app for $40 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it, I was at a, a place where I was 33, well, 32, and I retired. I was chilling. Like, now I'm trying to build a company that's going to be, like, right now, we're probably marketed at like our evaluations at Reload is probably around what forty million dollars. That's not enough for me. I'm trying to make this company three, four hundred million in the next two or three years. 
You know what I mean? And um, I'm not I'm not okay with that evaluation. So that's the reason why, bro. It's like I can go buy like yo. Believe it or not, I was just buying cars because I was depressed and I had the money, extra money laying around. Like now, if I, if I spend five hundred thousand right now, I'm gonna think about it. I wasn't thinking about five hundred thousand back then. That was nothing. If I do it now, it's like I'd rather just roll re up on some shoes. I, I got different responsibilities. I'm building a fucking fifty five uh, hundred square foot condo. Three bedrooms, super massive. Um, I'm building a 20,000 square foot condo. I'm building a, a banquet hall right now. It's like, I got other things to put money into. I ain't going to, for what, for me to park on my side and never wash them? That's all I do anyway. So, yeah, my, it's just my mindset changed a little bit, bro. And you used to buy these cars cash. Everything. Out the gate. I still do. But it's not, it's not to, that, to, that, to that extent no more. I still got about a million dollars worth of cars, but it's just stupid to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm only driving one or two. And I like to drive, believe it or not, I like to drive pickup trucks. It's my favorite thing to drive. Mm. So I got a brand new TRX that, that's literally about to come back out right now. I'll get, it, I'll get it next week. I'll post it. I got a new TRX that just got here next week. So I'm cool. Hellcats were your thing, though. Like, Hellcats were your thing over Lamborghinis. Why, why the Hellcat? Believe it or not, it, that name just kind of stuck with me because I was like the first nigga in Philly with a Hellcat. So no one knew my name. They used to call me, yo, that's the boy in the Hellcat. That's the boy in the Hellcat. And then when niggas knew that I was Omi, oh, that's the Omi in the Hellcat boy. So that's what, in, that, I didn't give myself that name. That's just what people used to call me. And then I, now everybody got those fucking Hellcats, man. It kind of made everybody. me not want to buy them anymore, man. But but what made you? Cause you used to always say the Hellcats were your favorite car. It Why is. did you like the Hellcat over the Lamborghinis? It's, it's just I like I like shit that's comfortable, big, powerful. Yeah, you know what I'm saying if if I know somebody behind me, I know I'm gonna get away. You know, you know what I mean? It's just to me, it's like it's the is is a real muscle car. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and that was coming from a dude who who loved Camaros. I'm a Camaro fan. And. A lot of these cars now, they're going electric. How do you feel about that? Believe it or not, I think it's better. I was against really? it for a while. It's way better. Way better. Way better. You get more torque. Like right now, um, I think I'm about to buy a Chevy, a Chevy truck. It's electric. Uh, like, it's like a new Avalanche. 900 horsepower. Electric. Bro, that shit, bro. Electric's going to kill gas. I mean, yeah, the sound, the rumbling. The sound, man. The sound. You, you seen the new Hellcat got a speaker under that piece yeah. of shit. <laughs> 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 nah, nah, nah. Electric didn't be better, bro. You're going to see. The only thing that, that kind of scares me about electric, and I'm going to be honest, is for niggas in the hood that, that got to be at the gas station filling up for 45 minutes. Hmm. That's good. You really can't drop your location then. Yep. And, and then all, all that's going to be electrified, man. You're going to have dudes knowing everybody's location. Oh, because every car got GPS in it. Dudes are going to be hacking in the cars. Yo, this, this is where the car parked at. I'm telling you, man, we're going to have some new cyber futuristic crimes that's going to come behind this shit. Would you rather do business with Elon Musk, Jay-Z, Kanye, or Floyd Mayweather? Right now, I'll take, I'll take Kanye. Because I know really? I, I know the business that he's in, and I know that I know we're gonna do a fast turnover. What I want to do? Sit on Twitter all day and talk shit? <laughs> nah, nah. Elon, I, I, Elon's Elon's one of the coolest billionaires, though. Bro, he's incredible. Oh, but did you hear? Fucking Mr. Beast might be the new CEO of Twitter. Mmm. I saw that. That'll be fire. Nah, but like I, I, I take Kanye. Because I know me, like, I know he's bipolar a little bit. I know he's going to come in the room, not talk to me for three or four days. But the, the minute that he does turn around, I know we're going to get some shit cracking. He's just like me, bro. I'm, I'm not all the way bipolar, but I, I have my moments too. So I, I, think, I, think, I think we'll get it cracking together. I'll take Kanye over anybody. Yeah, um, yesterday I posted a collage of 30 different rappers in jail right now. Mm -hmm. From Pooh to YW Melly, Young Thug. ARF. 
AR Ab, a lot of different rappers. Um, and then, because I remember at that time, it was a point in time you was trying to rap. Um, well, you oh, were no, rapping. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to drop like next week. I'm but dropping. to my point, DDG said that YouTubers make, YouTubers and streamers make more than rappers. That's a fact. So why why rap? It's, it's not safe. They because don't make money like I, that. I'm going to tell you why. Because it just takes you to a whole another market audience. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, and, and it correlates with the shit that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to rap to be around rappers who want to wear my shit. So to me, it kind of just makes sense. But I'm just still not like, I'm a YouTuber who, who can talk with a camera in my face all day, but I'm afraid to get on the stage. I just want to prove mm. to myself that I can do it. You know what I'm saying? And if, if Rod Wave can fucking rap on the stage, I know I can, because that nigga is <laughs> ugly. You, not, you do not look better than me. I'm joking. <laughs> nah, he, he, 